Welcome to part 5 of the I2 Costex training video series. In part 5, we will demonstrate the subcontractor comparison feature of I2 Costex. When a bill of quantity is received from a quantity surveyor or client, this powerful feature allows quoted or alternate prices from various trades and suppliers to be compared and brought back into the received BOQ. A subcontractor comparison report can also be produced to show the various trade prices and quotes with different colors indicating a different status. In this example, we're creating a new project. Remember, we can refer to the subcontractor comparison manual for more detail on anything shown in this video. We'll start by inserting a subcontractor's profile. This is done by going into System Administration and selecting Costing. Under the Subcontractors tab, we can insert two subcontractors and their relevant details. We can also nominate the trades to match the trade breakup workbook to the relevant subcontractors. A more advanced way is to import all the user subcontractors with the CSV file. We can also add subcontractors directly in the workbook. Now let's create a subcontractor comparison workbook. In this building, we've already imported the bill of quantities from the QS and the code library for our package breakdown, which we will be using later. Under real life circumstances, the BOQ would only have quantities but no prices. However, to save time here, we have pre-entered all the estimate prices. The client bill is a single level workbook comprised of concrete, reinforcement, and formwork. For the purpose of subcontractor comparison, we want to separate the three trades. As the codes have all been pre-entered and the code library already imported, we just need to select Generate Workbook Group by Code from the drop-down menu under the Add button. We can call the new workbook Trade Sort, ensure the correct pre-imported code library and column I are selected and click OK. Now, when we open the new Trade Sort workbook, we can see it is a two-level workbook with three different trades. From here, Select the Generate Subcontractor Workbook option from the drop-down menu, leaving the new workbook's name as Trade Sort Subcontractor Comparison. Note, in the Preferred Subcontractor field, we'll select the Leave Blank Initially option as this will leave the Preferred Subcontractor column empty until the user defines it. Also, leave the Generate Cell Name option unchecked as otherwise the program will automatically generate named cells for key data. Ensure all three trades are ticked for inclusion and rename the three allowance columns to contingency, margin, and adjustment. Now click OK. A new subcontractor comparison workbook is generated and the subcontractor ribbon will open. The subcontractor workbook contains features such as fixed columns for our lowest and preferred subcontractors, read-only cells, automatic formulas, and subcontractor selection. There is also incomplete item check, empty price flags, columns formatting, export tender, export to Excel, adding notes and subcontractor headings, plus more. We can also see that although no data has been entered against estimate price for any subcontractors, the lowest columns have been pre-filled with the estimate total. After the subcontractor comparison workbook has been created, the first thing to do is assign subcontractors to trades. Notice that the two subcontractors, which we have added into system administration, have been automatically added to the concrete trade in columns Q and S. This is because we nominated concrete trades for them both when we added them. Now, we want to assign subcontractors for formwork and reinforcement trades. Using the subcontractor button, we can access system administration directly and add two formwork subcontractors, this time nominating the formwork trade. Now close System Administration, click the Trade Properties button, and in the Prompt window, tick the two boxes against the two Formwork subcontractors we just added to assign them against the Formwork trade. Also tick the single preferred box. This means that only one subcontractor per trade can be selected. Click OK to close the window. Another way to assign subcontractors is to directly add them into the Trade Properties window. We will now demonstrate this for the Reinforcement trade. Click any cell in the reinforcement row, then click the Trade Properties button, 
add two sample reinforcement subcontractors, tick the single preferred box, and click OK. Selecting Yes in the Prompt Message window will then save the data in System Administration. Now, two subcontractors have been assigned to each of the three trades. The next step is to fill in the subcontractor's prices. Workbooks can be exported and sent to the subcontractor to be opened in I2 Caustics Viewer or Excel. Once opened, quotes can be entered, saved, and sent back by the subcontractor or supplier for us to import back into I2 Caustex. Let's practice this for the concrete trade using the I2 Caustex Viewer method. We can click on any cell in the concrete row, then click the Export Tender button. In the prompt window, make sure the concrete trade is ticked and click OK to export the workbook. This can then be sent out to our concrete subcontractors. Now, say we have received the completed file from a subcontractor. To import, click any cell which has the subcontractor's name or total, then click the Import Quote button. Select the prepared quote from the folder to import the quote. A price of 36716 has been entered in cell R1 as the total price of the first subcontractor. We can also repeat the same process for the second subcontractor. A new I2 COSX feature is an enhanced support of formulas when using export to Excel. This also applies to the export trades to Excel function in the workbooks tab. We'll now drill down to the second level of the concrete trade and for easier navigation, we can hide the columns which we won't be using at the moment, columns G to H. Now click cell I1 and select Freeze Columns and use the horizontal scroll bar or tab to the right to display the preferred and low columns next to the subtotal column. The low columns have been automatically filled with data. As a single preferred option was ticked for this trade, this means that only one subcontractor can be selected as preferred. Hence, the low column is showing one subcontractor for all items because that subcontractor is lowest overall, even though their individual rates are higher. To demonstrate this principle, untick single preferred option. We can now see that the low column is showing the lowest price for each item. However, in this instance, we wish to retain single preferred status, so we reselect the single preferred option from the trade properties and then return to level 2. When determining the total of a subcontractor comparison workbook, I2 Costex will calculate the preferred total, including allowances, for a more accurate figure. Once a price has been entered, we can select the subcontractor for the item as preferred, regardless of whether the price is the lowest, in order to arrive at a tender price. However, adjustments may need to be made to the pricing to ensure that the comparison is on a like-for-like -like basis. We'll now select the four cells and delete the content. As in this case, the estimate pricing can be used to price items excluded from the first subcontractor's tendon. Then, from the drop-down menu of the Fill button, choose Fill from Estimate. The estimate rate will be inserted into the cells with the color of the numbers changed to blue, which indicates the use of an estimate rate. The second subcontractor is the lowest overall. To select the second subcontractor as preferred, click any cell with its name or total in it to select it, then click the Make Preferred button or right click and choose the Make Preferred option. The preferred column will then be filled with the selected subcontractor's details for all estimate items and their details in the subcontractor columns will be bold and underlined. The preferred selection can be deleted with the Clear Preferred button in the ribbon. Back on level 1, we can see the preferred details have been carried over. We can also choose to fill any missing items from a lump sum. For the pricing of the formwork trade, let's assume that the first subcontractor has submitted a lump sum price with no rate breakdown. In level 1 of the workbook, click the total cell of the first subcontractor to select it, and then click the fill button. From the drop down menu, select the fill to lump sum option, then in the prompt window, enter a lump sum in the final total box, choose quote for the status, and select OK. Then drill down to level 2 and verify that the lump sum figure has been spread over all the items pro rata to the estimate pricing. The details are shown in a green color indicating the use of the quote price and are also shown in the low column as this is the only pricing that has been entered so far. Going through this video, we can see that there are various colors. 
I2 Costex now provides four statuses of subcontractor figures, each with an associated color, green for quote, purple for plug, blue for estimate, and orange for other. The status and color of the figures can be changed at any stage by clicking the relevant colored buttons in the ribbon. At the top level of the subcontractor comparison workbook, we can also see a bar chart with the colors below the total figure. Status and color information is also available in subcontractor custom reports. We can also include addenda as required. To start, select the first subcontractor as preferred. Assuming that an addendum to the formwork trade has been received, the addendum item will need to be inserted into the pink section at the end of the trade. First, insert addendum number one as the heading in pink cell B23 and click enter. Then, right click and insert rows. We can copy and paste the headings and item description. Next, we can insert the new heading and description below and insert a positive quantity as an added item. Then insert a negative quantity as an omit item. Insert the rates for the estimate. and for both subcontractors. We can see that the second subcontractor still has a lower price. We can now add notes to the addendum items. Here, we'll just put in the received date. After the notes have been entered, we can see that a small red tag has appeared at the corner of the cell indicating the existence of the note. Notes can be edited at any time. Click the View Notes button and a note schedule, which includes all notes in the current level of the workbook. The associated cell name will open at the lower part of the workbook. An incomplete item check can now be performed to verify if anything is missing. To show this, we can drill down to level 2 of the reinforcement trade, and here we have pre-entered some items for the subcontractors. However, the second subcontractor's fabric items have been left blank. We can see these missing cells all have an orange tag in the corner indicating a missing price. Now if we click on the incomplete item check button, a window will open with a list of incomplete items. Double clicking on each of these will outline the corresponding cell in the worksheet. Now we can close the window and enter the prices for those missing items. Now all the subcontractors prices have been entered, we can see that both quotes are very different to the estimate price. This is caused by an estimate rate input error. To rectify this, we need to unlock the workbook first and then edit the estimate rates. After this, we can click the same button again to lock the workbook and prevent error entries. The objective now will be to select the second subcontractor for the bar reinforcement and the first subcontractor for the fabric. To do this, return to level 1 of the workbook, click the trade properties button, untick the single preferred box, and click OK. Now drill down to level 2 of the workbook and select all the figures in the low name column. Then click the make preferred button. And from here select the first subcontractor for the bar reinforcement and the second subcontractor for fabric. Returning to level 1 of the workbook, we can now see that both the first and second subcontractors names appear in the preferred name column in the reinforcement row. The subcontractor workbook contains three allowance columns which we previously renamed to Contingency, Margin, and Adjustment. We can add markups to these columns if required. The markup allowances may be done at both level 1 and level 2 of the workbook. Click the Fill with Percentage formula and enter a value of 5. This will apply 5% to the preferred subcontractor's total for all the items on the second level. Drill down to verify this has occurred. Then for the markup column, Use the same function, but this time use a percentage of 10. Notice that the formula has been entered on level 2 and totaled automatically on level 1.
for the adjustment column, use the filled and lump sum function again to spread 1000 over the cells. Drill down to level 2 to verify this has occurred. There are 15 report templates provided by I2 Costex for subcontractor comparison reporting. These are system reports and cannot be edited, but can be copied and then edited as a custom report. Let's click on the Reports button to open the Reports window. We can see that the 15 templates are listed. If we select one of these report templates, we can generate and preview that report. We can see that the data has all been transferred to the report including status information and colors. When the comparison exercise is completed and a tender price has been determined, a tender schedule that uses all the selected subcontractor prices can be generated. With a completed subcontractor comparison workbook open, we can generate a standard workbook. A new name will be required for the workbook. There are also options to choose Preferred Excluding Allowances or Prefer Including Allowances. Let's select Preferred Including Allowances for now. We can also use the drop-down Rate Subsheets menu to select an option. We can choose to replace subsheets with lump sum preferred rates or retain the rate breakdowns and distribute the third rate from the subcontractor comparison across the rate breakdowns pro rata to give the required total. Open the new workbook and navigate through it. The workbook is a standard workbook which can be edited as others are. Additional data has already been inserted into it, including the markup allowances and the names of the selected subcontractors listed against their pricing. At the beginning of this video, we coded a client bill and generated a trade sort workbook and subsequently the subcontractor comparison workbook. Now we can return the price tender workbook which we just generated from the subcontractor comparison workbook back to the client bill format, but with all the subcontractors prices filled in. This workbook may be used with any of our normal report templates to print a bill of quantities ready to send back to the client. This ends our video on part 5 of the I2 Costex training video series focusing on subcontractor comparison.